Hello and welcome to the latest installment of PSG Talking. I'm your host, Ed, and I am thrilled to be speaking to you today because Paris Saint-Germain have gone to Barcelona at the Olympic Stadium and they have won 4-1 and 6-4 on aggregate to reach the semifinals of the UEFA Champions League. Just let that sink in for a moment. This Paris Saint-Germain side was so much drama with Kylian Mbappe. We know about the, the players that left last summer. We know about all the new young players that have come in to this team for this season. Their first season under new manager Luis Enrique. A rebuild, if you will. And Paris Saint-Germain have gone to Barcelona and done the unthinkable. 4-1, they win. And it wasn't easy. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to talk about Rafinha's early goal. We're going to talk about the red card to Arroyo. We're going to talk about Vitinha. We're going to talk about the man of the match, Usman Dembele. But let's just begin with my overall thoughts on what this win means for Paris Saint-Germain. What it means for this team that has come together in one season and reach the semifinals. Folks, they are two matches away from reaching the final of the Champions League. We know Paris Saint-Germain was there in 2020 during the COVID year. They lost 1-0 to Bayern Munich. We all know what happened. But they have a chance to get back there with this team, with players who are, some of them are experiencing their first Champions League. Some of them, like Kylian Mbappe, this may be the last two games in a PSG shirt in the Champions League. We don't know. It's a lot to take in. There were a lot of really interesting moments in this game. Let's just start with the starting lineup, why don't we? Luis Enrique. I'm not going to say that he learned from his mistakes because I think that there were some fitness issues. I think there were some injury issues that forced him to make the decisions that he did. But he went with the front three that I was very happy with, the front three that I thought he would, an all-French front three. Kylian Mbappe playing centrally, Bradley Barcola on the wing, and Ousmane Dembele on the other wing. Great. It's exactly what needed to happen. PSG needed goals, and he goes with that front three. Love to see that. Warren Zaire Emery comes into the into the starting lineup after coming on as a sub in the first leg. He comes into the midfield. Vitinha and Fabian Ruiz. And give it up to Fabian Ruiz again. He's a player when he came in, not too many people were, you know, cheering for him and wanted to see what he could do and he was just kind of a guy that came in and he has come in and I thought he played well in the two games against Barcelona and he's really cemented himself under Luis Enrique in the system. So, credit to Fabian Ruiz for taking the opportunity and really making the most of it. I was most excited for the back line because Akraf Hakimi came in. He was suspended, as you know, for that first match. And he comes in. He takes over at the right back position. I was really excited because him and Usman Dembele on the right side really link up well together. And I thought with Barcelona being a little bit undermanned, uh, the, we know about the suspensions and the injuries that they have. I thought overloading with Hakimi and Dembele on that side really would open things up. Mbappe playing more central, he'd be able to play off Dembele and his playmaking ability. I thought I was very excited about that. Um, Marquinhos, he comes in, he plays center back. Lucas Hernandez at center back as well. And then Nuno Mendes playing left back. And then the one player that most would point to as the reason why PSG lost that first leg 3-2 uh, was Gianluigi Donnarumma. Luis Enrique showing that he has faith in him put him back in between uh, the goalposts, and that is your starting lineup. So overall, I think this is the starting lineup that I would have chosen. I think most reasonable PSG supporters would have chosen. This is the best team that you could have assembled with the available players. I didn't really have any issues with Luis Enrique's starting lineup whatsoever. I know some thought that maybe Manuel Ugarte should have come in, and he uh, Ugarte did come in in the 80th minute, but... I thought PSG, they needed goals, um, and, and I thought that this was probably the best starting lineup that, that Luis Enrique could have uh, gone with. So no issues there. Let's fast forward to the 12th minute. That is when Rafinha scored a really lovely goal. Um, I believe it was an assist from uh, I mean, Yamal. Um, they get on the board first. 
I think I tweeted out just a, a melting emoji face like, here we go, right? Here we go. We've all seen this script year after year after year throughout the Qatar Sports Investments era. It's PSG make a deep run in the Champions League, but they're just not good enough to overcome a Chelsea, a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, a Bayern Munich. They just can't overcome it. Sure, a lot of times the referee decisions play a part in that. But overall, I would say PSG has come up uh, short uh, in these situations. So Barcelona, they they score their goal, 1-0. So that puts them up you know, 4-2 on aggregate. We're 12 minutes in, and PSG are staring a two-goal deficit. They're on the road. I can't. I can't emphasize that enough. The crowd is against them. Sure, 3,000 PSG supporters did make an appearance there, and, and they were loud. Make no mistake about it. When I was watching on television, you could hear them. So credit to the traveling PSG ultras and PSG supporters who were there. They made a lot of noise. They were supporting the boys there, and you absolutely love to see it. But two-goal deficit, I was worried. I was worried. Like I said, we've seen this script. I thought, here we go, PSG are going to – Try to push forward, try to get their goals, and Barcelona's going to hit them on the counter. You know, you have a lethal striker in Lewandowski, Rafinha, three goals in this tie, Yamal, great young player, Pedri, another solid playmaker. I thought, here we go. I thought, I thought Barcelona's defense was going to be good enough to stand strong and make a stop and then just launch a counter in, in PSG. We've seen it get caught out before. So I thought it's going to start going downhill. I never gave up hope. You, you know, as a PSG supporter, you always hope. But again, we've seen how this story can go. But that wasn't to be the case this time, was it? Let's get into the big moment in the 29th minute. The game really flipped on its head. And that is when Barcelona gave the ball away in the middle of the pitch. And Bradley Barcola the newcomer from Leon gets on the ball on the left side of the pitch on the wing and he's dribbling and his pace is deceptive. He's got a long stride and I think a lot of defenders underestimate just how fast he is. He can make up a lot of ground with his long stride and it was Arroyo who was chasing him down and just on the edge of the box Arroyo puts his hand up Actually, on the replay, I've watched it several times. Arroyo seems to kind of elbow him in the face a little bit. He puts his hands on his shoulders. And at that speed that these players are going, Barcola goes down right on the edge of the box. The referee, red card. All right, let's get into that decision. Barcelona fans are going to certainly tell you if they were hard done by that decision. Xavi, the Barcelona manager, will certainly tell you that it was an undeserved red card. I think after the match he said something about don't ask me about the game because the referee destroyed it. Look, this is a really good Barcelona team. They were the better team in the first match against PSG. I thought they were deserved winners in that match, and I said as much on the previous podcast if you were listening. This is a really good young team. If they're able, we know their financial issues. If they're able to keep this team intact, maybe add to it, maybe bring in some players from the academy, whatever it is, I think they've got a really good, solid core here. Please don't give the excuse over the ref. That was a penalty. Every pundit that I've seen and listened to after this match, they've all said it's a penalty. Thierry Henry, Jamie Carragher, everyone. It was a foolish mistake. Arroyo is a solid defender. I would take him at PSG. He's a really good defender. But he's young. He's inexperienced. And this is what happens. This is what happens. He made a mistake. He was trying to make up for Barcelona giving the ball away. He didn't trust his goalkeeper, Ter Stegen, to come out and make the save. Barcola is not Mbappe. Um, He scored some really nice goals, but he had work to do. He had a lot of work to do. And I thought Arroyo sort of bailed him out a little bit. So Barcola goes down, red card, Arroyo goes off, and Barcelona are down to 10 men. The free kick after the red card 
doesn't really test the keeper too much. So PSG didn't really capitalize on that uh, opportunity. And you start to wonder, okay, PSG are up. They've got it. Uh, they have a man advantage, but they still have this two goal deficit. They need to make up four two, right? Then it was the man, Usman Dembele. He's been on the receiving end of a lot of abuse following his goal celebration in the first leg against Barcelona. Just really, just awful, just nasty stuff. Just can't have it. He was being whistled at in this match the entire time. It was the entire stadium, it seemed like, up against Usman Dembele. But it was his goal in the 40th minute that really, I think, yeah, Mbappe's goal later and Vitinha, we'll, we'll get to all those goals. Yes, those goals were important because they, they leveled the the tie and, um, and eventually put PSG in the lead. But I thought Dembele's goal in the 40th minute was the most important one because if you're going to start a comeback, it starts with one. That first one is always the hardest because that goal starts to put doubt in Barcelona's minds. Those are young players. You score that goal, they start to have doubt, especially if you score that right before halftime. If Barcelona can get into the locker room at halftime with that two-goal advantage on aggregate, I think Xavi will would have a, a different game plan. I think maybe he makes some different decisions. But it wasn't meant to be. Bradley Barcola, once again, was able to whip in a cross that somehow no one was able to, to, to get to. No Barcelona defender. I think even PSG had someone... Uh, take a stab at it, but it, it somehow managed to get all the way over to Dembele, who roofed the shot from a very difficult angle. You, I, I've seen that goal several times now, and for a guy that had only scored one goal all season before the first match against Barcelona and now this one, it's not a goal that you really expect Dembele to score, but he does. He roofs it. He he gets, sticks his leg out and he scores and. Uh, this time there was no celebration because the job wasn't done. He had the the foresight to just run and grab the ball and run it to the center circle and start play again because PSG wanted more. They absolutely wanted more. They wouldn't get it before halftime, but they go into halftime. Now the deficit is only 4-3. They'd have 45 minutes and a man advantage to turn this one around. In the second half, it was Vitinha who got the next goal for PSG, this time in the 54th minute. Crucial goal. That one leveled the tie at 4-4. It was a brilliant strike from him. And I would, I've just, you know, if we could just take a minute with Vitinha, other than Mbappe, who I would say has been PSG's best player all season, we, we know what Mbappe, we know who, who he is, what he does on the pitch, he's... Let's just say he's the best player in the world. He's the best player in the world right now. There's, I don't think there's really any debate. Some may debate you, but you'll hear no debate uh, from me. So with that being said, Vitinha this season, you could argue that maybe he's right behind Mbappe as the most important player in this PSG side. Whenever PSG would get stuck a little bit too wide and playing the ball and and trying to work down the pitch that way and making it a little bit easier for Barcelona to contain, Vitinha was always there centrally where you, where PSG could play the ball back to him and he sort of was able to survey the pitch and, and he had an advantage, a man advantage, so there was space opening up and I thought whenever he got the ball, his head was up, he was looking around and he was able to play the right pass. Of course, they didn't all lead to goals, but... I thought that Vitinha was so crucial in this match. His distribution was phenomenal. And this goal that leveled this tie was so important. I think Vitinha is the best striker of the ball when he's shooting from distance in this PSG team. He's always trying. I think in the first half he had a, a shot from distance that looked really good. Uh, but but it wasn't meant to be. He just kind of sailed over the crossbar. But he's always testing the keeper. He's not afraid to take that shot on. And this time, he wasn't afraid. And he takes the shot, and it was a, a screamer, a low screamer. And uh, he beats Ter Stegen. And, and, and as a PSG supporter, you just couldn't be more happy for him and the team. The comeback was almost complete at this point. 
So PSG are now up in the match and they're level on aggregate. Still more time to go, but tick, 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 right? After Vitinha's goal, um, we had another red card situation and it came Xavi. It came to Xavi, uh, Barcelona's manager on the sideline. I don't know what he was complaining about. I honestly don't care. But he runs over to the camera stand and he just kicks it like a petulant child. And I'm not going to spend too much time and and throw too many, you know, haymakers or or say anything. You know, there's other people on social media doing that. Um, But Luis Enrique's team made mistakes too. And, And... We've seen in the past when maybe PSG has had been hard done by a, a refereeing decision, and, and we see Nasser trying to find out where the dressing room is for the referees, and we see people complaining, you know, Tuchel complaining in the media about referees and all that. And I just don't think that that's a way that you can go about winning these Champions League matches. Not every decision is going to go your way, and. I don't think any decision in this match over the two and, and over the two legs. I don't think there was any decision made by the official that cost either team this this uh, this tie. I, I thought both games were officiated just fine. I thought the players decided on the pitch who was going to advance. I thought over the two matches, both teams made plenty of mistakes. It just so happened that Barcelona made more of them in the second leg and Paris Saint-Germain were able to capitalize on those. That's what it came down to. That was absolutely a red card on Arroyo. And, you know, I I don't know. I I think Xavi wanted Vitinha sent off in the first leg or something like that. But no, no, I I just I'm not going to I'm not going to entertain it. Barcelona, very good team. You have a bright future. A lot of those players I really like. I wouldn't mind several of them being at PSG. We've PSG supporters have had to take it on the chin for a little over a decade now. PSG finally got one over uh, on Barcelona, and, and the referee had nothing to do with it. So Xavi gets the red card for kicking the camera stand. He's sent off. Uh, to the stands or wherever he went, but he could not be on the on the touchline there. So he goes, and then it was the Kylian Mbappe show. Like a shark who smells blood in the water, PSG started to come at Barcelona in waves after waves after waves of attack. Usman Dembele once again pops up. He's in the box, and he sort of was, I don't know if he had his back to goal, but he certainly wasn't in a... He wasn't in a threat, a goal-scoring threatening position, let's say that. And Cancelo just takes him down. Very clumsy. Now some will argue, well, he got the ball. I th- I think he got his ball and got the ball and the and his foot. Um Cancelo on Dembele. I, I thought that that was a fair penalty decision in the 61st minute. I've seen him go against PSG. I've seen much less go against PSG and, and other teams get uh, penalty. So I thought that this was absolutely a penalty. Just, just again, another mistake from Barcelona. Another mistake. They went in the first uh, match, and I talked to Dan Hilton from the Barcelona podcast, and I was like, "How did you guys? How did your young players not make any mistakes? Is this that Barcelona DNA, or or what is it?" And he talked a lot about their academy and how they, you know, when they get to the first team, they're ready and you know to play mistake free football for the most part, but. That wasn't the case on this night. And again, they had several players who were suspended. We know about their injury situation. So I think they were undermanned even with 11 on the pitch. And then they go down a man. And and I thought PSG did really well to take advantage with the quality that they had on the pitch. So Dembele goes down, um, wins the penalty. And it's that man, Kylian Mbappe, who steps up. We've seen him do it in in the World Cup. We've seen him do it in the World Cup final for, for France. He steps up, and he converts the penalty. Just blasts it into the back of the net. And at that point, I thought, you know, when when Mbappe's taking that penalty, I just thought he's not it. He's not going to overthink it. He's not going to do like a Neymar kind of twinkle toes and just, you know, roll it into the corner. Mbappe stepped up there and he said, "I'm putting this in the upper ninety, and I'm going to kick it as hard as I can, and let's see if Ter Stegen can block it." Ter Stegen guessed right, but Mbappe just put too much pace on it, and there was no goalkeeper in this world who was going to save that. 
Mbappe then jumps over the stanchion, over the advertisements, because he's facing the PSG supporters, and he's celebrating. And you know, for a minute, I thought, maybe he's thinking this is really fun. Maybe, you know, maybe he's thinking this is, I like this a lot. You know, after the match, he talked about how proud he is to be from Paris to be Parisian. And you do wonder in his mind, you know, there's been no official statements about that, uh, move to Real Madrid so you know you do start to wonder with this long run in the Champions League playing with guys like Vitinha and seeing Dembele flourish and seeing the rise of Bradley Barcola and Zaire Emery is he looking around and thinking I could get it done here you know but that's a, that's a podcast for another day but as he jumped over to celebrate with the fans after uh, PSG scored that it did it did make me wonder so 3-1 in the match PSG are now in the lead, and they are also in the lead on aggregate 5-4. They had completed the comeback, but there was still work to be done. Barcelona would not go down quietly. I thought they played really well with their backs up against the wall. I think they hit the post at one point. They forced Gianluigi Donnarumma to make a really good save late on. He had to get down for a six foot five guy to get down low and, and make a save. Marquinhos had to do some last ditch uh, defending. So Barcelona has certainly tested PSG. And as we've seen in the past, PSG are, are well prone to giving up a, a penalty of their own or, you know, a, a handball decision goes against them in a penalty. You know, we've seen this happen or, you know, Donnarumma plays with the ball and gives it away and it leads to the goal. We've seen pretty much every way a team can throw away a win or fail to complete a comeback. We've seen this PSG side do. And so Barcelona, I thought, did really well to test PSG there at the end, and they just ran out of gas. And then late on in the match, when Barcelona were really trying to push to, to save their Champions League life, you know, they only needed one goal. That's when PSG launched the counter. And they get down in front of Ter Stegen, and there's a couple shots. Some of them ricochet. Ter Stegen made another really good save. And just by miracle, the ball lands at Mbappe's feet. And he knows exactly what to do with it. And he blasts it home. In the 89th minute, his second goal on the night, he'll finish this round of the Champions League with two goals. And that's all she wrote. PSG 4, Barcelona 1, 6-4 on aggregate. And through to the semifinals, Paris Saint-Germain goes. Let's stick on Kylian Mbappe for a second because I thought, if you listen to the previous episode, I thought that Kylian Mbappe didn't do enough in that first leg. And full credit, full credit to Barcelona's defense. They had a great game plan for him, double teaming him. And they kept him quiet. And, and PSG's other players just couldn't get it done. Um, but in this match... Kylian Mbappe, once again, kind of quiet until late in the match when it was Kylian Mbappe time. When they needed a player to step up and just get them over the finish line, Dembele had done his job, Barcola had done his job, Vitinha had done his job, and then in comes Mbappe and says, thanks guys, I got it from here. He scores the two goals, he scores the goal to put PSG ahead, and then the, a little extra security, he scores this goal. And he also jumped over the advertisements to go celebrate with the PSG supporters, if I'm not mistaken. So once again, he's celebrating. PSG are through. The Barcelona supporters who were there, most of them started to funnel out of the stadium. And the 3,000 traveling PSG ultras in the upper deck were just bouncing and singing. And it was the glorious night for Paris Saint-Germain. Just absolutely glorious. Make no mistake about it, we all know that this wasn't the Champions League final. We know there's no trophy for beating Barcelona. But you have to understand, if if you're a longtime Paris Saint-Germain supporter, you, you know what I'm talking about. If you're new to the team, you what you need to understand is the heartbreak that this team has put us all through year after year after year. We all have expectations of doing well. And it's not that Paris Saint-Germain has never won the Champions League. It's that they've gone out in this tournament at the most spectacular ways possible. We all know the Rimentada from 2017, the 6-1 win Barcelona to come back uh, from a 4-0 deficit. We all know about that. We know about Manchester United coming to the park and knocking Paris Saint-Germain out. We know about 
you know, Benzema bullying Donnarumma off and and advancing past PSG. Like we've seen, we know about Bayern Munich uh, and Kingsley Coman, our our former youth player, coming and scoring the goal to deny PSG the Champions League trophy. So. For those who say a team needs to experience heartbreak before they can actually ever win anything, that's something they say a lot in the NBA uh, here in America. Um, Paris Saint-Germain has probably gone through the most amount of heartbreak that any team in modern football has ever had to go through on the pitch. Obviously, there's other things that go on, but just on the pitch results and things going against them, it's almost like PSG has been cursed. And they sort of reversed that a little bit tonight. Again, Rafinha scores in the 12th minute. It's 4-2 on aggregate. I think if you gave most PSG supporters a lie detector test, they'd probably say, hey, this isn't looking good for us. I've seen it before, but they battled back. And you have to be proud of that. I hope every PSG supporter listening to this wears their jersey, their shirt, their hoodie, whatever you have. Wear, wear the badge with pride tomorrow because this was a performance that you could be proud of. Absolutely could be proud of. They were the better team. They took advantage. And you got to give full credit to Luis Enrique. He got everything right tonight. For what he got wrong in the first leg, and again, injuries may have played a role into that, fitness issues, he got it right tonight. I talked with Mark Damon, and he said Luis Enrique was the adult in the room. Instead of kicking camera stands and all that and complaining about referees, he stayed calm, cool, and collected. And I thought that that even filtered down to the communications team at PSG. Who was it on social media before the first match, after the first match? Who was it on social media who was talking a lot? It was Barcelona's official account. They made a movie. Let me let me just they made a movie about that win in Paris. They they put a Barcelona jersey on the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. They were just needling PSG on social media. And I thought, and then you look at their manager, just throwing a tantrum when things didn't go his way, kicking things, complaining about the ref, saying, ah, don't ask me, he ruined it. No, he didn't. The referee did not ruin the game. This was a fantastic game of football. And just because you go down a man doesn't mean you ship four goals. There's plenty of examples of a team going down a man and not allowing the other team to score four goals. Barcelona made mistakes. They have young, very talented players, and they made mistakes mistakes and for once and for once Paris Saint-Germain was able to capitalize on those and they are now through to the semifinals of the Champions League so after the match I th- I tweeted I was at a loss for words it took me a while I'm recording this in the evening after the match where I am and I just had to take it all in I, I was sort of just walking around saying I can't believe they did it I can't believe they did it and now they'll go on to the semifinals where they will play Borussia Dortmund, a team that they will know very well. They played them twice this season. Uh, they were in the same group, and for those who thought PSG's group was not the group of death, well, with uh, playing Dortmund in the semifinals and AC Milan and Newcastle, I, I would say that it's probably the group of death. And so PSG made it through that group. Now they're through to the semifinals, and they'll play Dortmund. PSG beat them 2-0 at the park uh, early in the group stage and then drew at Dortmund in front of the yellow wall. They needed that draw because um, they were looking the Europa League. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if PSG went into the Europa League instead of this exciting run that we are uh, that we're experiencing right now? Would have just been, you know, it's a game of inches, as they say. Um but uh, just Paris Saint-Germain, just phenomenal performance on the night. They'll go and play Dortmund. And, you know, as I look at Dortmund, they're sitting fifth in the Bundesliga table. And uh, congrats to Leverkusen for ending Bayern's reign there in that league. You love to see that. But uh, Dortmund, they're not lighting the world on fire. Fifth in the Bundesliga. They did win 4-2 tonight. Against Atletico Madrid, they win 5-4 on aggregate. What a crazy game that was. What a crazy game. But you look at that Dortmund side, and and no one is really going to strike fear in in PSG. Maybe uh, Jaden Sancho, he's certainly a player to keep your eye on. 
But I just look at that team and no one strikes me as someone that PSG needs to be overly concerned about where they need to maybe, you know, double team or anything like that. I think PSG against Dortmund can play their game. They'll be full of confidence knowing that they've beaten them before. This is the team that they've they've beaten a decent amount in uh, recent seasons. So again, they're going to have that that benefit of having seen this team this season. Now, teams evolve throughout the season. We've certainly seen that with PSG. So I think Dortmund will probably mix things up. It's, it's going to be difficult to, to beat a team three, four times in one season. But I, I think betting favorite... I think most of the pundits out there are probably going to pick PSG to to advance past Dortmund. I, if there's a trap here, I would say maybe PSG could be a little bit too confident against Dortmund, but they're going to get a wake up. They're going to get a wake up call soon enough uh, because later this month or in uh, early May, I don't know if the schedules come out yet when I'm recording this. PSG got to go to Dortmund. That's the first match of this one at Dortmund in front of those fans. It's going, to be, it's going to be a tough task. And I think the goal there, I think PSG should probably play a counterattacking game. I like the mindset of, hey, let's get out of here at the bare minimum with a draw. Let's just get a draw here, 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, whatever it needs to be. And let's get back to Paris and blow the doors off of them. I think that has to be the strategy. I would I would play a more counterattacking game kind of absorb pressure because Dortmund are going to want to come out and score and then hit them on the counter. I think their defenders are a little bit on the slower side. Barcelona have really good, young, fast, I thought, uh, defenders. They're going to face a different type of defender against Dortmund. And I think that it's advantage PSG with uh, Bradley Barcola and Kylian Mbappe, especially in Dembele. I think they've got playmakers who who are just better than Dortmund's defenders. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about PSG scoring goals, but let's just say bare minimum, let's get out of there with a draw. And then I think PSG hosting Dortmund in front of the park. You'll remember the last time they were at this stage, it was during COVID. There were no supporters. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about what's going to happen in early May when Dortmund, they come to the park in front of that stadium, in front of that crowd, the TIFO going up. They had a great TIFO with the Star Wars against Barcelona. What are they going to have in store for the semifinals? I'm probably not going to be able to get a ticket. I'm jealous of those who can get a ticket for that one. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be must-see TV. And the PSG can advance to the Champions League final on their home ground, in their home stadium, in front of their home supporters. I, I, I just feel like... It, it, I know PSG reached the final in 2020, and I remember the celebration after beating Dortmund, and, and, and the fans go up, and the, or the players go up to the top of the stadium, the fans are down below. Great scene. It's one of my favorite memories of being a PSG supporter. I just think that this would be... I think this moment would top that if PSG were able in front of their crowd in the stadium, if they were able to reach the Champions League final. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's some really solid matches tomorrow on Wednesday or maybe today if you're listening to this, wherever you are. You got Arsenal and Bayern Munich. And then uh, the one I'm going to be keeping an eye on is Manchester City, Real Madrid. We're going to see what happens there. And it's still possible for a PSG Real Madrid final. How crazy would that be? I think, I, I don't know, I'm not like a big ratings guy, but I'd have to imagine that Champions League final, if it is PSG versus Real Madrid, Kylian Mbappe going up against a team he may or may not be joining in the summer, probably more likely than not joining. I think that's probably going to do World Cup numbers in terms of viewership. This could be one of the most watched Champions League finals. But we have to get through Dortmund first. We've got to get through Dortmund first. And there's also this little thing called League on that PSG need to wrap up as well. They've got um, a double-digit lead at the top of the table. They play Leon on Sunday, and then they've got away at Lorient, and then home against Le Havre. If they can win those three matches, very winnable. I, I would imagine that would be enough to uh, to be crowned champions. And then uh, then playing uh, at Dortmund, I think you'll probably see that match before Dortmund. Luis Enrique, as we saw against Claremont. Before the first Barcelona match, I think that Luis Enrique is going to rotate his squad, especially if we can wrap up the league. I think you're probably going to see some of the really young kids get out there and show what they can do. So let's wrap up that league. 
Ligue 1 as soon as PSG can. Focus on Dortmund. Guys, we're in the semifinals of the Champions League. I cannot say that enough. No pundit. I don't think most supporters. We. I think most supporters were really happy to get out of the group stage. We were happy uh, when PSG were able to get past Real Sociedad. And we're like, hey, Barcelona, quarterfinals, whatever happens, this has been a good season. Luck has been on PSG's side. We're on the right side of the bracket. We've gotten a really favorable draws. And if you would have said, hey, PSG supporter, beat Borussia Dortmund over two legs and uh, you're in the Champions League final. I think every single PSG supporter would have signed up for that. PSG are looking good. They're clicking at the right time. This come from behind victory at Barcelona is just going to be the boost of confidence that these young players need. 18-year-old Zaire Emery, Usman Dembele going up against his former team with everything going on in the background that he has to deal with, all the criticism and and he scores two goals. PSG's confidence is going to be sky high. What we need to do, what PSG needs to do is no injuries. We cannot have any injuries, but we also need to keep our form and our fitness. We got to keep playing well. And I think Luis Enrique, I'm confident with him at the wheel. And I don't know when it gets done, but Luis Enrique has certainly earned an extension on his contract. Whatever PSG can do, to let him know that he is their guy, that he's there for the long term. Whatever they need to do to make him happy, getting this team to the semifinals of the Champions League, you, you absolutely have to take care of your manager. So if it's after the season, I'm sure maybe discussions are going on now. But he, I think he's exceeded all expectations for me and for most PSG supporters. You know, you look back, um, we've had Lee Davy on. Uh, before, if you're a longtime listener, and, and he he was at the Newcastle match, I think it was four one, and, and he said, if you would have told me at that point when PSG had just gotten throttled, just absolutely just run off the pitch, if you would have told him or any PSG supporter, you guys are going to be in the semifinals after that kind of performance, we would have just laughed at you and said, there is no way, or are all the other teams going to quit so PSG can get to the final? Uh, it just you would never have believed it, but here we are. Believe it. PSG have done it. They have done it. They have come back against Barcelona, and they're in the semifinals now. A lot to be proud of for this team. A lot to be proud of. Proud of Vitinha, Dembele, the whole team. Everyone played well. Donnarumma, sure, he maybe had a shaky moment here or there, but overall, he made the saves when he had to make them, and he made up for his uh, performance in the first match against Barcelona. So, just very, excuse me, very, very proud of this team, and we move forward. We move forward from here. All eyes on Dortmund now. We'll concentrate on that tie. As I mentioned, PSG are going to host Leon. That's always a fun match. We know Leon is a little bit down this season, but we're going to be excited for that when it's at the park. Um, so we'll see. The, the fans should be in full voice as they welcome the team back to the stadium. Should be a very exciting match. Sorry you had to listen to me rant and rave and ramble on this podcast. Uh, I guess it should be fully transparent. We did interview Mark Damon, longtime PSG talk contributor, and we had some technical difficulties. His audio was overly modulated, and I thought instead of blowing your eardrums out that I would just make your ears bleed by listening to me in this wonderful podcast. We'll have a lot more on this. Um, Head over to PSGtalk.com. We've got uh, Eddie, our writer, is just over there cranking them out. So uh, go check out the latest stuff, who said what, and uh, and all that. So PSGtalk.com. I'll probably write a column up on our Substack PSG Talk Extra Time. It's free to subscribe. Go ahead and just subscribe there, and you'll get it right in your inbox as I hit publish. And then, of course, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, we would just be thrilled if you could subscribe wherever you get your your podcast. And if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review, or maybe not a review, just maybe say "Ale PSG" or whatever you want to say. Always enjoy those uh, reviews. So. Thank you again so much for listening to the show. Hit me up on Twitter at PSG Talk. Love to hear you from you guys. Uh, happy to answer any questions you have at this match. But I'm just, I'm ecstatic. I, I can't believe it. Paris Saint Germain through to the semifinals of the Champions League. It's got a nice ring to it. Let's get to the finals. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.